Hi, and welcome to this week's video. A uh, quick uh, update on the writing retreat. We've had to change the date. So the new dates are April 28th to May 5th of 2024. And um, coming up is me and Sonora, kind of talking a little bit more about it. And uh, I had word from Tama that I think my heat is fixed. It's costing quite a lot of money. They had to replace the mother motherboard as predicted. So, but I guess I have heat and um, who knows, maybe the motherboard will last another 10 years. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, filling this week with a lot of art doing. So if you're here to watch renovation, uh, you might want to find a different video. <laughs> but if you like art, Yay! And uh, I, it gave me the opportunity to put in lots of music, which you guys seem to like. So, anyway, hope you enjoy. Talk to you soon. All right, we're at Elliott Bay Books in Seattle, and I'm here with Sonora, who's reading her own book. <laughs> <laughs> we had to make sure it was on the shelves. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, make it make it prominent there. Why not? Why not? All right, Sonora. So we're here to talk about the writing retreat. So I've had a lot of people ask me, okay, what is this writing about love thing? What does that actually mean? Oh, that's a great question. I actually think like every book or every story is really about love um, in so many ways. So it's not, you know, the retreat is not about writing a love story or writing a romance. It's more about writing all kinds of love, like at the heart and the heartbeat of any work of uh, fiction or nonfiction or essay or even letters to your family, whatever it is, um, is about love in some ways, either the loss of love, grieving love, finding love. Uh, love for community, love for revolutions, love for political action, love for humanity, love for the planet. So, you know, sort of getting to the kernel of love in our stories and expanding from there and seeing what happens when you say, what would you do for love? You know, what would you do for love? Um, so that's just one of my writing prompts as a, as a <laughs> right yeah. so what will a day in the life at the retreat look like oh my gosh you're asking me to dream about the, <laughs> and the sunshine and everything um, I think we would get up in the morning to sort of like feel where we are and just sort of breathe and um, enjoy you know feeling this gratitude of being in this beautiful place with definitely croissants and all kinds of delicious <laughs> things around us as you know um, <laughs> And then setting down to write and, you know, talk about things. So we'll read a little bit. We will talk about our own stories. What are we working on? Where are we stuck? Where are we flying? Um, and I'll give uh, writing prompts. I'll talk about my own journey as a writer. I will meet each person individually and ask them, like, where's their story? What could, what can be helpful? Um, and get deep into some writing and you know so sort of like then spread out in the different corners of the property yep. and uh, feel inspired and then come back and share and you know have coffee and right. sit by the fire what if um <clears throat> what if somebody's not really a writer or hasn't had a lot of experience writing can they still come yes absolutely so when i started to write you know i had journalism in my background but i didn't know about writing fiction at all and I had to sort of find my way to it um, and just start doing some exploratory writing and then boom I realized oh my goodness I love this and you know just started writing different and the first ever scene I wrote was about uh, this farmer he's looking at his wife and she's getting the 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 home ready for the day and how much he loves her you know he's just watching all her morning rituals and falling in love with her all over again so right. I think there's little things like that that keep creeping up in my writing and um, even you know love letters to my son um, telling him about everything from his childhood and everything those things are just uh, beautiful for me too so whatever wherever you may be in your writing process and you may not think of yourself as a writer mm -hmm. but um, if you want to put a pen to a page, you know, the retreat is for you. Yeah, great. Um, I have a question for you, Abby. Okay, okay. okay. Uh -oh. uh, tell us a little bit. Let me reverse that, actually. Okay. 
<laughs> tell us a little bit about the retreat and about the chateau. So I bought the chateau just over a year ago now and I've been fixing it up. So if you've been watching this YouTube channel, you probably know all about that. And uh, I've uh, successfully done the very first retreat, which was a sketchbook retreat. And it was super fun. We kind of did yoga in the morning. There was a lot of eating. There was some drinking of wine. Yes. Um, and then there was a bunch of excursions where we would kind of go out into... Uh, the, the surrounding area both around the chateau but also in the community and they were all opportunities to sketch so that was kind of it was very sort of excursion oriented uh, for this writing retreat it'll be a little more insular because we'll be spending obviously time at the chateau writing but uh, we will be doing a few excursions. We'll probably do the cooking class at uh, Diane's Chateau Le Duc, Diane and Eric, uh, which was super fun. Everybody really had a great time doing that. Mm -hmm. We'll probably do a wine tour because um, there's of some course. beautiful chateaus and you know you have to do a wine tasting and mm -hmm. see the area. And a couple of other things like that that just will allow us to um, see the area. We'll, we'll do a little walking tour of Agen. Nice. Go see the art museum, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. lots super, of eating, lots of drinking. Super, lots super excited. Yeah, <laughs> the, the eating and drinking helps the writing. Writing helps the eating and drinking. <laughs> it's a it's whole a lot circle. Of brain work. You yes, need to, you need energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, can't wait, and we are uh, excited to see who joins us. Yeah, indeed. Well, I'm back in the studio and um, just doing a little bit of repairing. So uh, I got these kind of uh, <laughs> these wooden deer heads in um, Bali during a sort of a trip. I was there. I was um, I went on a trip in 2019 and I found them and they were awesome. But they're really old and quite fragile. So I've just tried to kind of glue them with. Um, there's this uh, liquid nails. Don't know if it will work, um, but I kind of gave them a new forehead. I think there was a whole piece originally on here that's now missing. So I don't know. I don't know if his little horns will stick or not, but we'll find out, I guess. Anyway, um, I thought I would uh, do a little painting today. So I have my sketchbook out. And um, yeah, maybe I'll just set up the tripod so I can do that and paint at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna set up the iPod. 
no, the tripod. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, so uh, I'm just kind of farting around today. It's been a while since I painted, so I thought I would just start with doing people practice. So just uh, kind of do bodies. And if you're artists out there, there's a, a YouTuber called, <laughs> well, his videos are called Bob Blasts. <laughs> He's really cute. He's an older guy, and uh, I just love his videos. He's just so happy. So he calls these carrot people, so I think they're really fun. Um, so he just gets you practicing with carrot people. And uh, yeah, it's just sort of simple, super simple. I've kind of got too big of a brush, so uh, it's not probably ideal. But um, he does this, and then he also gets you doing kind of um, or to do one where you kind of take the negative space, so you kind of draw like this. shoulders arm and then you draw the, the legs I got the ran out of paper on this and probably made this too long but you get the idea so that's kind of fun horizon line. These are pretty obtuse, I have to say. You do have to do a lot of practicing. Um, I'm needing some white. The idea is that you kind of go from light to dark and dark to light. Play to do with my paint. Okay, well, those are super obtuse. I'm not sure they're very successful, but there you go. That's all right. It's just practice, just having fun.
every ocean come as rain I know my circles I know my name <laughs> Messy, messy. Well, I don't know if I love these. So, when I don't love something, I generally just start painting over it, just for the heck of it. Oh, I just put my hand in all of that glue that's uh, on my little, on my little deer head here. Oh dear, I should move that away. Just kind of silly. Let's see. That's a fun brush. I need a fun brush. Hmm. Not a brush, maybe a knife. Let's get a knife. It's a brand new knife. Time we cease
Well, we will let that dry. That will have another piece here. And painting that I haven't worked on for a long time. Said what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I kind of like the black and the little etchings here. I don't like the pink at all. So, what can I do? What can I do in this case? There's something about the pink. I don't really like this green. I like these two colors. I feel like it wants white. Christmas! <laughs> I got the wreath up. <laughs> I suppose I could have ironed that ribbon now that I see it, but there you go. All right, just thought I would uh, throw in a little Christmas spirit. <laughs> Some peace of 